Welcome to Bunny Fish Crafts. I'm your host Heather, known as Bunny Fish on Ravelry, Plurk, Instagram, and YouTube. Today is Monday, the 28th of July, 2014, and this is episode 89, Tour de Fleece Roundup. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot my own tagline there for a moment. Um, yeah, so life is still crazy. I'm still getting used to the whole job thing. Um, I slept in until 11 today, which is crazy because Mara wakes up at 7 at the latest. So, um, mostly she just keeps repeatedly climbing on me from 7 to whenever I wake up, but my body is, uh, is not used to going to sleep so late because I get off work at midnight. And then I still need to wind down during the day, or from the day, so I don't go to sleep until about 2. And my body needs 8 hours of sleep, and it will get its 8 hours of sleep. <laughs> um, sometimes I'm fine not having 8 hours of sleep. For a while there, for like 2 years there, I was getting like 5 hours of sleep. But now my body is like, um, no. I imagine that it will get into the swing of things and I'll be able to have less sleep or fall asleep sooner after work or something. Something will change and life will be a little bit more normal, but I don't react well to change. I just never have. I try really hard. I try to, um, like big change, like starting a new job. And also big change coming up, Gabriel's going to go to kindergarten. That's all I'm going to say because it's kind of stressing me out and I'm trying not to think about it, honestly. But August 13th, schools start up here. So that's going to be a big change. And, uh, I don't know. Hopefully that will, hopefully that will be the balancing change though, because he'll be at school. So maybe there will be more quiet time because Mara's pretty quiet. So maybe I'll feel more rested during the day. I don't know. We'll see. It will also, see, Gabriel also helps clean the house and Mara doesn't because she's just learning and Gabriel already knows it's a two-year age gap. Anyway, normally I don't talk about life too much. I did at the end of last week's episode, but um, I want to say thank you to everybody who posted in the com in the episode thread about the podcast, about how you're still interested in watching, etc. That really meant a lot, and I know that I haven't responded to probably any of you. I just, I haven't been on Ravelry that much. Like, I, I get on, I read your comments, I have every intention of writing back. But life is hectic right now. So, um, know that I'm thinking of you, and I will respond when I feel that I can sit in front of my computer long enough to respond. And it really means a lot. I feel like such a, a bad podcaster, and such a bad friend person in general for not responding. I will try this week. I don't know if I'll get there because again, it's kindergarten prep time and it's insane. It's insane. I do not remember getting ready for kindergarten being this crazy when I was a kid. I mean, maybe it was, maybe my mom will say it's this crazy, but I don't recall that at all. Anyway, on to some knitting stuff. The stuffies along is still going on. It goes for one more month. Um, thank you everybody who's posted finished stuffies. I almost want to make more than my list. I'm probably not going to, but I almost want to make more. Oh, I might. I'll tell you about that later. Um, there's a coupon code for Ami Eyes, which here are, here's some examples that are kind of washed out. Oh, you can't even see how pretty those purple sparkles are. I put a, post, a picture in last week's episode, so hopefully you saw it and you saw those eyes. Um, the coupon code is BPC. 2014, all smushed together, and it's 10% off an order of $5 or more. Definitely go check out his stuff. Lucas has really reasonably priced things. He hand paints all the eyes. He comes up with more styles frequently, and um, he, I'm sure he would consider custom work. I mean, he I don't know if he'd take all of it, but if you had a custom idea, I'm sure he'd consider it and get back to you promptly 
with whether or not he'd be able to. The tag for this knit along is BPHSTUFFYS14. Um, knit or crochet, either is fine. And prizes. One prize will be this gorgeous skein of Dancing Dog Dye Works. That's pretty true to color. It might be a little bright on the screen. I don't know, it's always hard to tell before it gets uploaded to YouTube if colors are going to be correct. But it's close to that. It's the Flamenco DK in the I Believe colorway. And it is 213 yards. So you can make an awesome stuffy or whatever out of this. It's really, really pretty. Orange, lime green, golden yellow, and blue. Like a, a sea blue. Not a sea glass blue, like an ocean blue. It's very pretty. And the other prize will be a set of eyes from Amy Eyes. So how cool would that be? Then you could make all the stuffies. I don't really have a finished object, but it's kind of a finished object. So I'm going to show it and um, it's going to be my introduction to works in progress because I don't have any finished objects. But this is the closest thing I have to one. So this is the pink fiber that I believe is merino silk that I've been spinning on this adorable tiny Turkish. It's super pretty. And um, it's not finished because I need to spin the corresponding brown fiber that I'm going to apply it with and make some sort of art yarn. Intentional art yarn. And by the way, this is all going into Tour de Fleece. My Tour de Fleece was pretty successful. I would, I would count this as a success. Some days I had to have my friends tell me I needed to spin so that I would spin. And it was difficult because I didn't always want to spin. <laughs> starting a new job that I didn't expect to be starting, you know, it threw all the things off schedule because I didn't have the job when I made my goals for Tour de Fleece. So, yeah. I was expecting to have those, you know, four or five hours a night for myself, and then they were taken over by a job. So, kind of threw things off, but I was successful. I met my goals. It was difficult, but that's good. It was good to push myself. So yes, this is this is finished. Um, I finished that skein of yarn during Tour de Fleece. I had previously started the first bat, but um, only I don't know only a week earlier or something. I had just started playing around with the bat, so I finished that skein. I spun 10 minutes every day that the tour rode on my Spanish peacock um, Tibetan. I think I have an ounce spun. Maybe a little under an ounce. I think it's close. I don't know. I'd have to weigh the, the fiber. Well, I'd have to weigh the spindle with the fiber on it and subtract, subtract weight of spindle to determine how much fiber I have spun. But I am enjoying this. It's it's still not as smooth of a spin, like process-wise, as my drop spindle. But I'm getting more consistent. And um, I'm getting the weight of fiber that I'm interested in. Or yarn, fiber, yeah, I'm getting the weight of yarn <laughs> that I'm interested in. The ply is coming out how I want it to. Um, I'm getting faster at it, which is good. I don't feel quite so awkward, and I'm, I'm becoming more successful at drafting while the spindle is spinning instead of having to do like a park and draft method, which I think is a huge success. I'm going to I'm going to keep up with spinning on this, but probably not every day. I think I'm going to shoot for every other day 10 minutes because something's got to give and it, it's going to be this. Because I really like this, but I don't... It's for me, so I don't feel like there's a deadline on it. And so much of what I'm working on sort of has a deadline. 
self-imposed or otherwise. Anyway, what I'm spinning on my Spanish Peacock is Cloud Lover. And it is Blackberry Truffle colorway, 40% Merino, 40% Superwash Merino, 20% Silk. And that's four ounces. It's, it's super nice to work with. If you haven't worked with Cloud Lover, highly recommend their stuff. Um, I've worked with two skeins of sock yarn and now this fiber and I really really am enjoying working with it. The colors are great. Yeah, go check out their stuff. And also, if you haven't started spinning, go pick up some spinning. It's fun. I'll even enable you if I can. If you want to start spinning and you don't know where to get stuff, send me a PM and I will hook you up. I also am spinning the Huckleberry Knits Superwash BFL, um, four ounces in the colorway Centurion. Still working on that. That is what I'm spinning into the two ply lace. So this is what the single looks like. I am on the final ounce, this much spun up. The, uh, the spindle, the cup will be you know, it'll come out on the sides. Maybe not that much, but it'll be close. This spindle gets really, really full for the ounce. I probably could have broken it into five pieces instead of four, and that would have worked a little bit better, but whatever. It'll be fine. So this is what I have left to spin. And here's the third ounce. Here are the first two singles and here's what I have plied. I did ply a little bit more this week because I wanted to spin but I didn't want to draft. So I plied a little bit more. It'll get there. It won't be done before the end of the month. There's no way I can spin this. There is a way. There is a way. I could spin this into singles today and tomorrow and then ply on the 31st but um, I wouldn't do anything else. So there is a possible way, but it is not a practical way. So this won't be done by the end of the month. I've made my peace with it. I'm a little sad, but nah. I also have to realize that my life at the beginning of the month is drastically different than my life now. So I'm fine with it. Because I finished the pink single and... Um, my goal was to work on one of my works in progress for 15 minutes a day. I picked up this spinning project, which, um, this is my, this is my beginning spindle. This is what I had, except it's gone through lots of changes. So the only parts of the spindle that are what I originally started with are this little cup hook, which just twists right into the top. See, you can untwist. And this um, plastic, I don't know, is that a washer? I don't think it's a washer. And it's not plastic, it's rubber. It's rubber grommet? I don't know. It's a rubber something. And um, it, has, it has a hole in the center that a dowel. This used to be a dowel. Now it's the handle of a wooden kitchen spoon that was well loved as you see. My dowel got snapped, so it was only like this long, like to here. That was too short. But I had a kitchen spoon that the spoon was getting a little worn and the handle looked like this, so I was like, well, I'll just saw off the top and use that instead because it'll be long enough. And I don't really care if the bottom's not pretty. It's just a totally uti utilitarian spindle. And um, it had two CDs, but they were snapped by my children. So I have one CD on it now, which makes it lighter weight. Depending on what I spin next time, I might put a second CD on the spindle. But um, yeah, that's this is a this is a really great style to start with if you are starting out because I think it's like three bucks and the washer or whatever, the rubber thingy. Um, 
can hold one or two CDs so you can change the weight of your spindle depending on what you want to spin. So it's really inexpensive. Um, even if you bought all the, if you bought a dowel and a cup hook and a washer, I think it would still only be like five bucks, maybe 10. But instead of a dowel, you could use an old kitchen spoon that was on its last legs. And um, everybody has CDs laying around, right? That still happens, old CDs. Mine used to have something burned on it, but I, don't, I have no idea. It got scratched and so it was no good anymore. Oral DVDs that are scratched. I've seen some really cool CD spindles that have like labyrinth and stuff on them. You know who you are. Very cool. Fraggle Rock. Yeah. Very cool. So anyway, I really like this spindle. It spins forever and it gives me a little bit thicker weight spinning. There you go. I, um, what else do I want to say? Oh, this fiber. This is the fiber that I received from Jenna of um, Knit Buffalo 716 Knit fame. She sent it to me. It's, I, I believe, I can't find the note that she sent. It's in this room somewhere, but yeah, it's in this room somewhere. I believe it's four ounces, and I also believe it's a Corridale alpaca mix, but that could be wrong. I'm not going to look it up and put it in the show notes, but if I remember next week, if I find the note, I will tell you what it is. So I um, I think I did about an hour of spinning on this this week, which is pretty good. It's substantially bigger than it was at the beginning of the tour, which I didn't realize until I took the before and after photos. But I got a lot finished in three weeks. Three weeks, that's how long the tour rides, correct? I think so. Aside from, oh, oh, I had a really cool experience this week, spinning related. I was over at, um, there's, there's a lady who moved in last year. She has two kids who are, she has a boy and a girl and they're each one month behind my boy and girl, approximately a month. I think, I think a month exactly. Well, not exactly, but like mine are early September, October birthdays and hers are late October, November birthdays. So they're really close in age. Um, her boy is starting kindergarten as well at the same school. So that's really exciting. And Gabriel was playing with the kids. And I guess he was invited over for dinner or he found out they were having dinner and he asked if he could eat over there. I don't know. We had just gotten back from going out to Red Lobster for dinner, but he wanted to not stop playing with his friends. So, um, Gabriel and the boy came over and the boy was asking me all these questions about if Gabriel was allergic to things. And I was like, no, he's, he doesn't have any food allergies that I know of because they had come to knock on the door. Mara had been playing with them earlier, but then she, she decided she wanted to color instead because she's very much a, an introvert, single player type person. Well, when they knocked on the door, she decided she wanted to go play with her friends. So I went over and I was like, hi, is it okay if we come in? And Mara wanted to play with the kids and um, their mom said, yeah, that's fine. I don't really know my neighbors. I don't. I want to, but I'm so socially awkward that I'm just, I'm socially awkward. So I don't know how to insert myself in conversations and they're, they're all very nice, but they're kind of clicky. You know what I mean? Like they don't try to involve me in the conversation either. If I say something, that's fine. If I include myself, that's fine. But they don't ask me a lot of questions sort of thing. So I don't really know my neighbors that, that well. It's fine. They've 
for the most part, they've all lived here for a very long time. Well, the lady who moved in a year ago, you know, shortly after I did, she works all the time. She's a single mom. She runs her own business. She works all the time. So they're not home a lot. So we don't get a chance to talk and interact. Whenever her kids are out, my kids want to be out. So they play a lot. Our kids know each other pretty well, but um, I know her mother better than I know her because her mother watches the kids sometimes in the evenings. So anyway, that was a lot of backstory. <laughs> we were in the kitchen. She was cooking dinner. I was standing around pretending to assist. I didn't I wasn't really assisting, but we were talking and she was like, so I don't really know anything about you. Like, I don't know you at all. So what do you do in your free time? And I was like, well, I knit a lot. I read a lot and I spin. And she kind of looked at me and she was like, hmm. And then I think she made the connection that like I, I did spinning like on a bicycle or something. That's a thing, right? I don't do that. And I was like, like I spin yarn and she was like, what, how would, how do you even do that? Like what, I don't understand this concept. So I, um, I was trying to explain it, but she's not a fiber person at all. So I could see that she was just like, these are a lot of words that don't mean anything. It's like, I can just run and grab some projects and bring them back and show you if you want. And she was like, yeah, that would be kind of cool. So I did. I took the, um, I took the lace project. I took the, the, um, supported spindle project because those are totally different styles of spinning. And then I took my Turkish spindle and I showed her on this. So this has like two whole yards on it, more than it did at the beginning of Tour de Fleece. But that was really cool. She was like, wow. Wow, that's kind of amazing. She was, it was like her watching a magic trick. I could see that that's where her brain was going, that I was doing magic. So that was really exciting. And uh, maybe when both of her kids are in school and a little bit older, so, you know, in a couple years, I can bring her into the fiber fold. Because she seemed really, really interested, but she's just incredibly busy because small children take more time than older children. They just do. Okay. <laughs> That's all my spinning. But I still have other works in progress. I worked on Urban Survival, but I don't think you would even be able to tell the difference because I can barely tell the difference, so I'm not going to pull that out and show you. I am going to try to have it finished by next week, but who knows. Um, Urban Survival is by Josh Ricks. And um, if you're a podcaster and you've been saying Rikes, it's Ricks. Just so you know. Don't worry. The first time I said his name on the podcast, I said Rikes. But it's Ricks. It's Josh, Josh Ricks. If I could even say it. I can't. Okay, so what I have been working on that is not spinning, this adorable, gonna be a panda someday. So this is all the stuff I had last week. Ears, arms, head. I may have started the hood, but this is the hood. Because I told you I was going to try to make the, um, the hood and body out of the light colored stripe. Well, this is the entirety of that light colored stripe and it was not enough to make the hood. So I ripped that all out. And um, I started on the legs because I was like, well, I don't have appropriate yarn, so I can't work on that right now. So here are the little legs. And everything intentionally stripes up because that's just the mood I was in. I'm not always in that mood, but when I was working on this, that's the mood I was in. I did make a little modification because this pattern is Rocco by Lydia Trisselt and it's meant to be a raccoon. So I told you about the ears last week. Well, this week I made a modification to the tail. The tail is supposed to be um, a raccoon tail, but I'm making a panda. So I did, basically I just made the tail like the thumb in the pattern 
and um, it will look like a tail whenever I get to working on the body. But the next part is, is white, so I haven't started that yet. What I did do is, uh, here's a new thing. Well, let me tell you about the, the yarn that I did have first. Sensations Bamboo and You pattern in the purple black pattern. So that's what all of the stripey yarn is. I didn't have any white in my stash and a lot of my friends, my podcasty friends, you've probably seen them talk about this, have gotten this loops and thread wool-like yarn, which is the Michaels brand fingering weight um, acrylic nylon blend. Hold on, I will find you. 85 acrylic, 15% nylon. It's a fingering weight and it is really, really soft. So I've started the hood and I am, I don't know, I'm less than 10 rounds from finishing the hood and then I'll start the body. Um, I was going to say something totally distracted by the black stitch marker on my white hood. I don't know why. While I'm trying to think, I'll tell you that this is a USB 2.25 millimeter hook. Oh, yes. So about the, the crocheting. So this is knitting up, knitting. This is crocheting up at the exact same gauge as the other sock yarn. And it's really, really soft, like super soft. I don't know how it washes because I haven't done that. I don't know if it's really weird because some, some really soft acrylics then get really pilly when you wash them, but this isn't particularly pilly when working with. And it's really, really soft and super inexpensive with the, um, the 40% off coupon that Michaels puts out this ball, which is 678 yards for a hundred grams. It's, um, it was $1 and 90 cents. So even if you bought two skeins to hold double to use as like a DK worsted, 600, 78 grams of DK worsted, super soft, would still only be $4. And it's nice. It's really, really nice. So if you're looking for a fingering weight, I would say this would be good for, um, you could make a hitchhiker out of this because hitchhikers don't really need to be blocked. I would say that this would be a good option for any type of shawl, shawlette that doesn't need blocking, so not lace or anything, because it is acrylic, which you can block. You can steam block it, apply really high heat, and it's called killing the acrylic. But I don't really want to do that. I also think it would be good for um, baby stuff because it is like ridiculous soft. Ridiculous. I don't know how they made it so super soft, but it's super soft. It's machine washable um, and really affordable. Of course, I love um, for fingering weight. You, you can see my whole shelf of right there. That's all indie dyed fingering weight. And this shelf down here is, uh, I think that's all indie dyed. There's a skein of lace that may or may not be indie dyed. So you know I love indie dyed stuff, but if you're looking for something affordable, it's a really good option for fingering weight. That's super soft. I'm really enjoying it so far. If I if I find that I don't like it for some reason, of course I'll tell you. But I probably won't go into, oh, this is so amazing again. So yeah, hood. Hood and legs, that's what happened on the panda this week. Not as much as I wanted, but I realized that I didn't have the yarn on like Wednesday and I didn't go to the store until Friday and then I worked all weekend, so just didn't get done. I also worked on my mitts design, which I will 
I'll show you where I'm at on them. So this is what they look like. That's what the palm looks like. I am planning to make them pretty long for me, so maybe another four inches. I don't want to go all the way to my elbow, but I do want to go not four inches, that's not, maybe three inches, another several inches, um, so that they're long because I'm going to put that into the pattern options for making them longer. The nice thing about starting at the knuckles is people can work down until it's a length that they want instead of you know work from here do some decreases and then then you're stuck with however long those decreases let you make them um, so that's that's how it's going this yarn is absolutely beautiful you know I love highly variegated things this is the cyborgs craft room cyborgs craft room I should have closed the curtain but I didn't I'm sorry um, this is the Asacolate base which is 75% superwash merino wool 25% nylon in impromptu dance party can't see that sorry the um, it's being worked up on a US 1 2.25 millimeter needle and I do intend to have that written up in the next week. I have today and tomorrow off, so there's probably going to be pattern writing. No promises, though, because uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think that I'm trying to fit all of the stuff that I would have done at the beginning of the month into now, and it's not going to work. I actually have a, a little thing to show you at the end of the podcast that uh, hopefully you will find as amusing as I do. Anyway, works in progress. I still have one to go. These are all of the things that have had like actual progress this week. Aren't you proud of me? I feel proud of me that I still managed to eke out knitting time because uh, and spinning time. I know this is a very this is a very blah 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 work heavy episode. Hopefully this is the only one because I'm starting to annoy myself with it. Sorry. So this is the test knit for Lisa. Last week I had one heel done. So I finished the other heel. I am probably three quarters of the way through the leg and then I just have the cuff. So I'll be, I'm going to be working away on these so that I can get them to Allison. Allison, PM me your address. I want to say that I'll remember to ask you on Ravelry, but that's, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'll remember. So they're almost finished, which is exciting. I opted, the, the pattern that I'm test knitting has the pattern on the back, but since they're not for me, I opted not to just in case that pattern took away some of the el elasticity because I can't just be like, hey, try these on. Do they fit? Yes? No? Too tight? Good? So... I can show you all that. Um, and this, the pattern I will talk about more next week because I believe that it will be released in the next few days. I believe that's the plan. Um, yeah. The yarn I'm using is Tofootsies, which has... Is it chitin? Amelia told me somewhere. She she schooled me on it, but I didn't write it down. I think she said it was chitin, which is a fiber from shrimp and crab shells, and it's naturally antibacterial. So that's really cool. These socks are almost done, and this yarn, this color is super pretty. Does it have a name? I don't think it has a name. I think it has a number. Yeah, just has a number. Number 743. It's very pretty. I just looked at my show notes and I forgot. I forgot the most important thing about Amanda's panda. Okay, so this right here. This is the head, one ear, and two arms. 
Okay, so this collective thing attached together with a coilless safety pin. Mara has been carrying this around all week. I've been finding it in the most random places. And it is her mermaid. This is Mara's mermaid. So that's what I was talking about earlier when I said maybe I'll be making another stuffy because Mara has been in love with her mermaid. So I might be making her a mermaid. I haven't decided. It might just be a face. Maybe she'll get over it. But if she keeps talking about a mermaid, then I'll make her a mermaid. And as soon as I finish this, I'm going to have to hide it so she doesn't try to claim it for her own. Sock yarn blanket is right here. I did 11 squares this week because I had all those squares to make up from last week. This side is all ZK yarn, so everything with a stitch marker. All of these across the top. And these four as well. This is, I love this yarn so much. So if you went to the ZK and you know what this yarn is, or even if you didn't go to the ZK and you know what this yarn is, please let me know, because I love that so much. This one is um, Solar Flare Fibers in Winter Rainbow, which I love. And someday I will have a skein of that. And then over on the other edge, it was folded nicely earlier, but then, um, yeah, fail. I have the two colors that Claire from my knitting group gave me last week. So this is Peyton's Croy sock in the clover colors. And she's not 100% sure, but she thinks that this is Peyton's stripes. I don't know. It's still pretty. I did six hexapuffs this week. So here is Winter Rainbow again. So pretty, and I'm going to close that. Before I started recording, having the curtain closed made it too dark in here, but now I guess the sun has shifted and it's now too bright with the curtain open. So this is Winter Rainbow. This is graffiti. I think it's by spun right round, but that might be incorrect. I talked about it a couple weeks ago for my sock yarn blanket. This is the um the stripey yarn from Claire. Clover colors. This is ZK yarn which I don't know what it is, except super pretty, and it sparkles. And this is also ZK yarn, but this is Malabrigo lace, and it's from that sweater that Josh made for himself that became for me. So, so soft. Um, so now I have 666 blanks, squares on my blanket and 216 hexabuffs. Yay! New things. Told you about the white yarn. It is not the only yarn that I got this week. It's the only yarn I purchased this week, but it's not the only yarn I got. So I went to my mailbox on Friday, actually. After I got home from picking up yarn, we also did other errands, library, groceries. I went to the post box because our mailboxes are at the end of our street. We need a key and stuff to get into them. And there was a package, and I was like, interesting. I did not order anything. And um, on the return label, it says, Cuppy Cake Yarns. And I was like, Cuppy Cake Yarns, I know that name. I had watched, I had watched a few podcasts that morning as I was, you know, cleaning and stuff. I was like, who mentioned Cuppy Cake Yarns? Which podcasts did I watch this morning? Because there were a handful, and I couldn't remember who specifically had mentioned Cuppy Cake Yarns, because someone had. So I got home, and I put the groceries away, and 
I kept looking over at the package and I was like, no, groceries away first. You get your prize after you do your work. So I put away the groceries and then I opened it and there was a card inside, but there was no invoice. So I was like, who is this from? Who would have sent this? So there's this adorable little card and I opened it and I read it and look at how cute that little sheep is on the top with thanks. Oh, so cute. Little hand stamped card. And it says, there's a line on here where I instantly knew who it was from. Makes me wish I was on a black sand beach. And I was like, I know what this color is going to look like. And I know exactly who this from, who this is from. So aside from the yarn, which is cute and the adorable card, there are also these little tags that are hand stamped and cut out. So super cute. Cubby Cake Yarns has me totally with the packaging. Completely. Because on the back of the envelope even is this adorable little cupcake sticker. How cute, right? So I, it comes wrapped up like a little present. It was much nicer looking. But, um, my kids have unwrapped the present several times. And also, I pulled this sticker off when I unwrapped it so that it wouldn't be ripped. But again, my kids have unwrapped it several times because they're like, ooh, a present. It's a present. And I was like, I know it's a present. It's my present. So I unwrapped it. And yep, crinkles. Crinkles mean good things are coming. Look at that. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. And I'm slightly dehydrated. So again, I'm going to, this is going to be a work-related moment. Um, I don't drink beverages when I'm at work because I, I just don't. I worked at this particular grocery store before, but I was in a different department. And we weren't allowed to, I worked overnight. We weren't allowed to have um, beverages on the floor when customers we're in the store. So the first two hours of our shift, we weren't allowed to have beverages on the floor. Fine. Whatever. That makes sense. Um, now I am a cashier, so I'm always on the floor. And even though other cashiers have beverages that they drink from, like I still feel like I shouldn't have a beverage with me, which is ridiculous. I just need to bring a water bottle in and have it with me because, um, honestly evening is when I get most of my water in because I'm just so busy running around with the kids all day that I don't necessarily think, hey, I should have something to drink. Gabriel's actually pretty good about making sure I stay hydrated. De no, stay hydrated. Yes, don't get dehydrated because he brings me water. But um, we've just been going, going, going for the past like month. So I'm slightly dehydrated, which is why my voice sounds as awesome as it does right now. Um, last night I started getting a headache, so I stayed up later than I normally would. I went to sleep at like two ish instead of one, one thirty ish. Um, normally for now, for whatever this is, um, because I was like, I need to drink like three bottles of water or I'm going to have a dehydration migraine tomorrow. So I did, which is probably why I slept so late today. Anyway. Look at this yarn. So this was sent to me from Josh. He got this exact colorway for himself because we saw on Instagram a friend of ours, uh, Rista 1313. She does girl cave bags. She had purchased this yarn. And the reason I knew it was Josh when I read that line is because the colorway is black sand beaches. I love this yarn so much. So we were we were in a VKN when he um, he admitted that he had ordered himself some yarn. He's supposed to be on a yarn diet, whatever that means. Apparently, it means like buy three new skeins of yarn a week. At this point, anyway, he was in the VKN and he was like, "Did you see the yarn that um, Susan?" posted on Instagram and I was like, no. So I went and I was scrolling and I was like, oh, that's so pretty. But I 
am not ordering a lot of yarn right now because I have all this yarn. I want to buy all of the yarn ever. I really, really want to, but I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to work through some stash. And especially now that my crafting time has been cut so drastically, I'm like, oh, I really want that, but when would I work on it? Well, Josh sent it to me because he's amazing. Oh my gosh, I love this so much. I love this so much. And look, it's similar-ish in the colors that I'm super interested in right now because so it looks like the yarn that I'm making the socks for Allison out of and it also kind of looks like my Urban Survival. Yeah. I'm super in like with this yarn. I would say in love, but it's not it's not quite love. It's definite deep like though. Isn't it pretty? I don't know what it's gonna be and it probably won't be anything really really soon, but I super like it. Okay, reading. I am reading. Well, not true. I finished it last night. This is the book that I was telling you about last week. So I read it this week. It is The Magicians by Lev Grossman. It's really good. I'm sad that it's over. But I have a book notice that something came in for me on hold this week or this morning at the library. So maybe it's the second one. Hopefully. Because this is super good. It's the first book in a trilogy. The third book is not yet out, but it it comes out this year. It comes out in 2014. So I won't have to wait too long for it. It is as if Chronicles of Narnia and Harry Potter got together had a baby. The baby grew up and turned 18 and that's where you start reading. Because basically the story is about Quentin who um, is a senior in high school and he goes for an interview for Princeton. He's one of those really smart kids. Goes for an interview at Prince for Princeton or something. I think it's Princeton. And, um, and then things go crazy. So the, the magical school, instead of being like a, a middle school to high school thing, like it is in Harry Potter, it's college. And, um, it's, it's very, very cool. There is graphic violence and, um, there is some sex, but it's not graphic sex. So read at your own risk. I found it very enjoyable for the most part. There were some scenes where I was like, oh, that's so... Ugh. Mostly the graphic violence. But um, it, it's a good story. It's well written. I enjoyed it a lot. I, I'm looking forward to the second one and then again to the third one. It, it's very good. I don't know. I don't know how to say anything without giving things away. Everything I told you happens in the first two chapters, I think. Um, except I'm going to tell you that it's not solely based on the college years. That's there's book one, two, three, and four in here. And I think book one and two deal with college and then book three and four deal with things that happen after college. Yeah, I think so. I think that's how it's broken up. I don't know. I read it and um, absorbed the story, but didn't absorb, you know, chapter breaks and things like that because I never do. It's all just one fluid thing in my brain. One fluid image, movie thing. Not so interested in the breaks. Definitely recommend it if you like that sort of magical fiction fantasy thing. But again, warning, graphic violence and some sex. 
not super graphic, but it's in there. And something that I will be reading this week is the Spinner's Book of Yarn Designs. So I'm pretty excited about this. It's by Sarah Anderson. And I may have flipped through it before. I can't remember. I feel like either I have flipped through it or I've watched so many um, reviews on it that I'm that I kind of know what's going on. Lorraine, my spinning teacher at Knit Group, she bought this and she is letting me borrow it for um, I'm sure I could borrow it for however long I want, but she's not going to be there next week. So for at least two weeks, this is mine and I'm going to read it and study up on spinning. I'm really, really excited. As I said, I want to turn this pink into an art yarn with a thicker yarn. So I think that this will, um, this will give me a better idea of how to accomplish what I want. I imagine that that is in here. I don't see it on the front page or on the on the cover shot, but I think it'll probably be in here. I'm excited for that. Um, and I also have a couple other like novels that I'll be reading. I'll start one or the other. Uh, on to the last little bit. I think that I've gone a little insane today because I have the day off. This is my list. Of what I want to accomplish today. It's already after one in the afternoon and realistically by seven nothing that's on this side is going to be accomplished. So if I want this side of my checklist to be finished I need to do that before seven because all of this is crafty stuff so I can do that whenever. Basically I want to clean my entire house and do this podcast. And then do all the crafty things. How many hours do I think is between now and seven? I, I must think that there's like 12 hours when actually there are six hours. Less than six hours. I'm a crazy person. And while we're, while we're talking about this page, this illustration is um, how you cast on two at a time magic loop for... Um, top down. So I'm going to tell you about it really quick because I was explaining to someone in a VKN and I needed a picture and my child is playing with the dog so that noise is going to happen. So this right here, this is the first half of your first sock or whatever. I'm going to say sock so that I don't have to keep saying or whatever. So you cast on the first half of your first sock starting here. So this is your first stitch that you cast on and then you cast on all of this. And that's the first half. And then you cast on the first half of your second sock. And you can place a marker and then go ahead and cast on the second half of your second sock. This little loop right here is just the connecting thread. So when you when you get that all cast on, then you pinch the cord where that stitch marker is and pull it through so you have the um, the needles parallel to each other instead of just one long needle. And then this is the tricky part for two at a time cuff down. Then you take the end of the yarn for your first sock and you start casting on your second half of your first sock right next to the last stitch that you cast on of your second sock. That first stitch that you cast on of the second half of the first sock is super awkward, horribly awkward. Every time I do it, I'm like, why am I doing this? This is so awkward. But with practice, it becomes less awkward. And if you're feeling that it's really awkward, just fake it. You might have a little bit of a gap, but that will go away. And then you cast you go ahead and you cast on the uh, the second half of your first sock. It's super awkward to get that first stitch, but um, it gets easier with practice. And it's also kind of fiddly for the first few rounds, but isn't the aren't the first few rounds of anything pretty fiddly? 
So I think that the list is the part that's going to suffer the most from the whole job thing. So that's probably just not going to be a thing anymore. Unless that'll be okay. That'll be a thing, but it'll be very irregular. Just so you know. Mom Yeah, babe. Do you want to say goodbye? That you? That is me, and that's you. You ready? You want to say goodbye? Bye! Thank you for hanging out for the past ever, and I hope you made something fantastic with your sixth and string. I'll see you next week. Bye!